Hi there, this is my um, brand new Celestron C5 SCT Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope F10, that's the focal ratio. The focal length is 1 to 50 millimeters, 1 and a quarter meters. That's the diameter. It's a 5 inch SCT and it's a lovely little scope. Uh, has quite a long history to it. It's been uh, remade over the decades, uh, but it's always been good, apparently, and this one's no exception. The latest coatings. Uh, this is the finder scope which I've replaced. Uh, I've replaced the uh, finder scope with this um, what's called red dot finder and uh, I'll come to that in a minute. I'm using a... these are slightly older eyepieces now, 50 uh, degrees apparent field of view. This is a Vixen Lanthanum, 25 millimeter, but very similar to the one that comes supplied with it. This is actually the diagonal, the 45 uh, erecting prism diagonal that comes with it visual back that comes with it. This is the focus knob. I'll show you a bit of that later. The mount I'm using on it, uh, which I really bought specifically for this scope, is an Explore Scientific Twilight One. And pretty good mount. Quite pleased with it. It's an altitude azimuth mount. It's not a equatorial, not a German equatorial mount, but I don't have to deal with counterweights, etc. Uh, so I'm just going to go through a few things so to give you an idea of this scope. This is my backyard. Welcome to my backyard. Um, we're going to just uh, what I'm doing today is aligning my finder scope and I think I have actually aligned it but I could fine-tune it a little bit so that it's all ready for tonight if the sky clears up and it's not bad the clouds are high I might be able to see something right now what I'm seeing and what I'm going to um, try and show you are these two little Buddha statues right at the end of my garden these two little statues here or at least one of them. So let's unlock an axis, unlock the other axis, and I'm just going to point it in the vague general direction because right, it's now free. These axes are free to move right, left, up, and down, out as mount. tighten this axis, tighten the azimuth, and let's turn on the red dot finder. This is a little laser that creates a sort of round rectangle. This is uh, made by Celestron. It's not brilliant, but um, I've actually I actually prefer it to what it comes with. Now, this red, I have to put it on full power for you to see this in the day, but this red ring here, can I make it focus? Yeah, maybe. There we go. Um, let's lower it. Wrong way. Here we go. I'm turning this to lower the telescope gradually. Lower the mount. Lower the telescope on the mount, however you like to. Ah, I've gone too far. Now, this worm control here. Turn this and you can see the telescope moving the wrong way. Let's try and move it the right way. Let's go back to the aiming circle. Here we go. And there we go. So, just a little higher. Now let's see, I can't guarantee this will work, it's not easy to show you, 
Um, the first thing to do, I think, at this stage is turn off the laser so you don't waste battery power because I'm fairly confident, having aligned this previously, that now I will see the statue. There it is, there's the head. Uh, it does seem to overexpose it on the phone, but here we go. Difficult to center that. Uh, so it is, it is actually aligned. And um, so why did I change the finder scope? Well, <laughs> the original finder scope that it came with, I couldn't actually align it because the alignment screws didn't travel far enough and basically it was pointed too far away. I needed it to point closer to the, uh, the I couldn't align the axis of, of the finder scope to the optical tube. And I had this which wasn't being used at the time, so I just uh, plonked this on it. Uh, this red dot find actually came with a couple of accessories, um, which is important. Otherwise, you can't just plonk it on there. You have to have the correct mount yeah, fittings, etc. Um, hmm. I've shown you most of the telescope now. Uh, a few specifications which you can always look up somewhere. The telescope weighs one and a half kilos, three pounds or something. The stand and mount weigh 7.6 kilos, I think I weighed it at. Uh, you don't need counterweights, of course. And um, it's a good grab-and-go uh, telescope stand. And I say grab-and-go because uh, with if I... If I use my 6SE Celestron, uh, which I absolutely adore, it's a great, great scope, quite similar to this really, but just shows me a little bit more because it has one inch, it's one inch larger in, in objective. Um, basically, this telescope could actually be faster. If I want to just look at the Ring Nebula, Jupiter, Saturn, objects that I know perfectly well how to find, M13, uh, M32, M31, etc. Um, this is the quickest telescope for me. Plus it's nice and portable, comes in a nice little bag, and so forth. And, well, it's, it's very nice and cute. I don't have a dew shield for it, unless the one for the six inch, which I don't think it will, will fit, which is a flexible dew shield. Um, I don't have a solar filter for it yet, but these are all the lots of little accessories that I might get. And I don't have a way to fix uh, my camera onto it because this is classed as a spotting, terrestrial spotting scope. And it would be quite nice to fix the camera onto it for various daytime viewing projects that I have. Um, anyway, this is a quick overview of the telescope. I'm just going to finish off with one little tip, which I... I learned from a nice book on binoc binoculars. When focusing, uh, let me just get this right. Let me just have a little look. Focus. I focus on something uh, very near, and then I like to focus into something as I get further away, uh, shift the focus further away, go past optimal focus, and then come back to, to, to uh, an object focused too near, Start again slowly, always at the same speed, reach optimal focus, and that's it. But go from near to far, not from far to near. Um, and the reasons for that are because it's uh, a better technique for focusing. It actually gives you better focus. Uh, it's easier to tell when you're in focus, when you snap into focus. And it's something, I, anyway, it's a good tip. I've always used for years and years and I don't think everybody knows this tip, tip but uh, that's what I use. So this way is to focus on something near and then this will go towards infinity if I go this way with this telescope anyway. Uh, not all telescopes are made in the same way. This is a good idea. Clean lenses you don't have to touch the surface. Uh, 
on the side like this, dust goes away. And of course, you can mount other uh, eyepieces on it. Um, my sort of favorite range is 8.8 .8 millimeters to about 25 millimeters. And I'm especially fond of 14, 12 millimeters, something mid range. And the, the 40 millimeter eyepiece also works, but it does show a little bit of darkening in the center because of the secondary mirror. And in this telescope, the secondary mirror takes up something like 39% or something around there of the total um, area of the corrector. So basically it's an obstruction, quite a big obstruction. Uh, it does darken the image in the, in the center at certain focal lengths, but not the, your usual focal lengths. Anyway, it's a very nice looking telescope. Not that anyone can see it in the dark. That's just it's black. Might be able to see them out. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to do some viewing tonight. Let's have a look at the sky. Hmm, it's possible. It's possible. I guess cl those clouds are very high. They could clear up later on. Perfectly possible. Okay, my name's Roland. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a little feel for these two bits of equipment. The Twilight One, the Celestron C5, which is a very well-respected uh, SCT, about the smallest SCT I think you can buy, five inch. And uh, I really like it for astronomy and for terrestrial viewing. It's quite fun. Right, that's it. Cheerio. I might do some videos on my on my other telescopes as well. Ciao.